Greetings, cyber dogs and citizens of the internet. This is Ren Diggadiddow coming at you from just outside Mob Castle in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival series. In the previous episode, we were working on installing a sweet ass lumber yard into the lumber mill of Mole City. And in this episode, my friends, we're going to be finishing off the roof of that bad boy, as well as working on a little something special for that build, which is going to be pretty sweet. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later. Check it out, man. Mob Castle is busy pooping out some mobs for us. That's absolutely awesome. Sit back and relax, my friends. It's time to play some Minecraft survival. Man, am I excited about showing you this, guys. I have been working on the side of the castle now for about two hours, and I just couldn't wait to hit the record button to show you fine cyber diggity dogs how things are going over here. I've done a bit of terraforming down here, too, trying to rebuild the beachfront that used to be a beautiful place to come and visit uh, just outside the lakeside villa. But check it out, my friends. I have been working on that lumber mill for so long that I decided to take a little bit of a break from that project and to come and, and work on the wall or, for, or the facade, if you will, as Iskal would say, for Mob Castle. And I think it is looking absolutely glorious. What I'd like to do, though, is get a bit of a better view with you guys. Let's get into this boat, try and not hit a squid, because there seems to be an infestation of squids around here. Let's go <laughs> around the corner over here and let's have a look at what I have done. So basically what I'm trying to do is build up the wall of Mob Castle so that it's not so freaking boring. Because right now all it is are stone bricks, right? And what I've done is try to add a couple of arches and whatnot. And this build was actually inspired by the amazing cathedral that Iskel built back in the Kingdom Craft days. And I'm trying to sort of replicate that. And yeah, it's looking kind of cool. If we go from the bottom upwards, we can see that we've got some dispensers which make these really cool little faces. And then we've got a few arches in there, some iron bars looking pretty cool. And then, we have a ledge area over here, and then the archway design repeats itself again. And I want to repeat this archway design all the way to the top, and I think that's going to be pretty sweet, man. We'll do that on each side of the castle, too. Takes forever, and it consumes quite a lot of resources, but I think it is turning out absolutely awesome. I've also been working on the spires, and what I basically did was I lined the spires with some stone walls. It goes all the way up to the top, and then I made these little balconies out of dark oak wood um, stairs, and I think those turned out really cool. So if you have a look at this spire, it's super boring. We just got some windows. It's very flat, very square, but this one is looking a lot more awesome, and I reckon by mixing in the cobblestone texture with the stone brick texture, we're going to end up with a pretty damn sweet looking castle, if I do say so myself. Finally, I basically remade the mob chute, or the mob receiver <laughs> thingy, that basically catches the mobs falling out of mob castle. Um, what I was noticing while I was working on here is that those mobs were actually not all going into the hole. If you guys remember, there was a hole over here that was catching the mobs when they fell down. But some of the mobs were moving in the air and so were landing on the edge of the hole. And so what I've done is I've created um, basically a chute that, that stops them being able to fall anywhere but into the aqueduct delivery system. And I think that looks pretty damn snazzy, man. I'm, I'm quite pleased with how this whole thing has turned out. Looking absolutely awesome. I've been doing a little bit of grinding, of course, while I've been out here. Um, <laughs> wow, that lightning, that lightning, man. Uh, let's get inside, actually. You don't want to get my ass struck. Um, but yeah, I've been doing a little bit of grinding up in here while I've been working on that wall. Getting myself a few more levels. Also repaired my efficiency for an unbreaking three diamond pickaxe also, because that was looking a little bit janky. Also made a little window over here looking into the uh, delivery tunnel because I heard some mobs drowning inside of here. I still haven't been able to isolate where that drowning is happening, but at sometimes a mob gets stuck in this elevator somewhere. I'm not 100% sure where yet, but I'm going to figure it out at some point. But anyway, mob cars are looking absolutely awesome. We've got a ridiculous amount of work to do, of course, on mob castle because we're going to have to do all four walls of the castle to get this project done and uh yeah <laughs> that is gonna take us some time but i'm having an absolute blast working on this again actually it's it's awesome um i really really love this project i love coming here i love grinding the xp up in here and i really do want to finish off this castle before the end of season four i think we owe it to ourselves to at least complete um 
to, to fruition, or completely finish, shall I say, at least one of our major projects that's, that we've opened up in Season 4. Mob Castle, of course, being one of them. Creeper, you better back up, son. Take an arrow directly to your mouth, you green bastard. Um, so yeah, in the next few episodes or so, we'll be working again on this. Man, I need to sleep this night away. Um, yeah, it is nighttime also, so... Lightning, thunder, rain plus night equals bad times uh, in Rentopia. But there we go. Looking good. Okay, so I thought what we would do today, just to, just to kick proceedings off, um, as we've been working so very hard on the lumber mill um, for the last few days, I thought, why don't we do something a little bit different and come and work on the beach right here in front of uh, the mob castle. I've got a whole bunch of dirt and stuff in these chests that have been slowly accumulating over time. And what I'd like to do is fill in all of this land or all of this horrible garbage that I've created over here. What a giant mess um, <laughs> has occurred on our beautiful beach. Am I right, guys? I mean, it's been, uh, yeah, <laughs> the beach has literally been decimated. And I know that quite a few of you guys were a little bit sad, especially those of you guys who are Minecraft environmentalists, shall I say. Um, that is to say, those of you who really appreciate the preservation of beautiful Minecraft environments. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Mr. Squirrel. Um, you guys are not very happy with the damage that I've done to our beautiful, gorgeous lakeside beach over here. So I think it's about time that we spend a little bit of time here fixing up some of the damage that we've done. I mean, you know, it doesn't take long. All we've got to do is patch up some of this horrible work that I've done, fill in some of these holes, um, and get this beach back to looking what it used to look like, which was a glorious, glorious beach where we could come and sunbathe and whatnot. And actually, let's kill this tower of uh, freaking gravel. There we go. We can hide this shame too. We've got the shame of um, the spider spawner down there also which is hmm I'm gonna have to maybe do something about that I'm thinking we maybe just cover it in sand um, and make it a huge dune of some kind that would probably work but I think I'm gonna work on that at some other point man we got a bunch of mobs that have spawned around here hello there skeleton what is happening you think that swanky ass golden armor is gonna save you well guess what son you're gonna get wrecked um, I need to drop off some stuff here, actually. Bones, I want to see what armory gave us. Blast protection, too. Well, don't mind if I do. I'll actually just stick that on myself. Um, there are a couple of creepers lurking around here. Uh, but, yes, let's start repairing the beach. Let's get this place looking like it used to. And I want to fill in this giant-ass hole that has been dug up here. Basically, for those of you guys who are new to the series, when I first started making glass <laughs> and collecting um, sand... I would come here to the Lakeside Villa beach and I would literally just rip up the beach and a lot of the glass that we've got in the current world, uh, like the glass of the Lakeside Villa for example, was probably made by the smeltation of the beach of the Lakeside Villa. So yeah, <laughs> it's been ba basically many years of damage done here to the beach. So quite a lot of repair work to do. I tell you what guys, I'm going to crack on and get this place filled up with sand and uh, see if we can get this beach looking basically a little bit better than it's looking now and I'll bring you back on the other side of this kaplooey. Kaplowy! Making pretty good progress over here guys. Basically treating this like a giant ass onion. I'm doing one layer at a time. As you can see um, I'm just underneath the aqueducts over here but guess what? Guess what? It gets worse. I completely forgot about this but we've also dug up the entire beach that lies behind the mob castle. And uh, this damage goes on forever, actually. Yep, yep, it goes all the way around the corner. I have dug up so much freaking sand from this beach. It is unbelievable. But you know what, man? This is like one of those projects that you have in Minecraft. And uh, I know that you all have projects like this. And don't try and lie. Don't try and lie now to say that you don't. But you know those projects that you always promise yourself you're going to get to that you never actually get to finish in? You know what I'm talking about, Cyber Dogs, because you do exactly the same thing. For every single um, lakeside villa beach in the Rendog world, there's two million lakeside beaches out there in the real world. And uh, yeah, we've got to work together as a conglomerate, as a Minecraft conglomerate, to finish off all of our unfinished freaking projects, man. 
So let me crack on with this, guys. I think we're probably going to have to head over to um, the desert area to get ourselves a bit more sand. I don't think we're going to have enough sand to actually fill in this entire beach. So we could be in for a grind today. Why do we do this to ourselves in Minecraft, guys? <laughs> Why do we destroy the environment so much when we are working on things and making buildings and castles and cities that when it actually comes to repairing it, we make such a giant pain in the butt for ourselves, it's not even funny. Am I right? Man, I am such a butthole, man. I should have thought about this back in the day when I was damaging this environment and digging out all of the sand. Anyway, things are going pretty decently. As you guys can see, the beach is slowly starting to take shape once again. The bad news is I am running out of sea sand and I am running out of dirt, both of which I need to complete this little side project slash, slash fix me up. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go and find myself a little bit more dirt and probably head over to Dogtown to get myself a little bit more sand from the desert. We're gonna, be ha we're gonna have to shift across a, a few tons of sea sand from the desert um, to the beach in order to fix the damage that we've done over here. Um, but anyway, things are getting there, progress is being made and I'm happy. Well, Cyberdogs, I have now spent a good portion of my Saturday night repairing a beach that I probably spent many Saturdays destroying. Yeah, <laughs> but check it out, man. It is looking awesome. Finally, after all of these years, I've managed to repair this beach. And it's been something that has been playing on the back of my mind for some time now, guys. Check it out, man. The beach has been restored to its former glory. I think there's probably still a little bit of work to be done around here. But as you can see, all of the sand has been moved from the desert onto the beach. The place is once again looking like it should, looking kind of beautiful, looking like a place where you can come and chill in the sun if you are spending a holiday in the Lakeside Villa. So pretty happy with that, guys. I'll probably spend a little bit more time off camera refining it. Um, I went really quickly through that. Uh, you probably noticed. <laughs> That's because there's some things that I don't want you to see that I haven't fixed yet. Um, but I'm going to fix those things once and for all off camera for now. I want to get cracking on another task for today's episode and I am super excited about this one because at the end of the previous episode we were working on the roof and the lumber yard of the lumber mill facility in Mole City. Can we actually see it from here? We can just see the roof over there in the background. That's pretty cool. Um, and today I want to finish off the main big roof of that structure. So while I may have spent my Saturday night working on a beach, I spent my Friday night working on a roof. <laughs> That's right, my friends. Last night, I spent a butt ton of time working out exactly how the roof is going to be on our lumber mill. And I just cannot wait to show you guys how freaking awesome it is, man. It has turned out absolutely beautifully. You might have got a little bit of a glimpse there as we ran in. Check it out, man. It is looking beautiful, isn't it? I'm going to take you through it from top to bottom, guys. Do not worry. We're going to have to go into the lumber mill and get ourselves some material, though, so that we can uh, complete the next section of today's video, which is going to be to finish off this roof. You can see that it is looking beautiful, right? I'm going to show you. Don't you? Don't worry, guys. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Let me just pick up some oak wood 
wood planks uh, and some oak planks, some birch wood planks, and we're gonna go, go down and get some slabs too, because that is what the roof is made of. Um, the majority of the roof is made out of slabbage um, and some loggage too. So let's just pick up all of this slabbage as much as we can, and now, I get to show you how freaking awesome this roof is looking. Check it out. Oh baby, you might not be able to see it very well from down here, but what you can see is that I've installed some cross beams over here um, out of dark oak wood logs. And you guys know how much I love cross beams. The reason that I love cross beams is, it because, is because cross beams help with depth, right? You can see that the roof has a gradient, a very uh, slight gradient that goes above those cross beams. And as we walk underneath the cross beam, we can see the depth that it creates uh, because of the space between the cross beam and the roof. We have exactly the same design inside of the, the Molmart Bazaar, and that turned out absolutely absolutely freaking awesomely. Um, but let's get a little bit further up. I think the best way for me to show you how this roof has turned out is to actually just nubivator myself upwards. And uh, you guys can see all the way from up here how beautiful the roof is looking. Check this out, baby. Oh, yes. That is what I'm talking about. Look at that. Now, I've left a little bit of work for us to do together. Um, I got a little bit carried away last night working on this roof because it was going so well. Uh, but look at this, man. It doesn't it look awesome. And what I've done is I've made those cross beams actually come through the roof and they hang over the road too. Um, so when we're down on the road here, man, I just got up here, but I do want to show you this though. So when we are on the road, you guys can see that we have these cross beams sort of sticking out of the roof and there is a little bit of space just between the wall and the roof also, which looks absolutely awesome. Look at that, man. And this is the lumber mill, of course, that we worked on um, in the previous episode. So the roof is coming on a turret. I am super stoked with how it's turned out. This is how I've been getting onto the roof, by the way, climbing up this tree and then taking a leap of faith. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and we're up. Um, and what I need to do still with you, a fine cyber dogs out there, is complete the um, the altered alternation or the um, block variation of this giant ass lumber mill roof. And all I'm going to do is fill in these gaps that I've left out um, with some oak wood slabs. And that's gonna complete the look of the roof up here. Um, looking absolutely awesome. Now I did mention at the beginning of the episode that there was something a special that I wanted to work with you guys today. Um, and that is going to be something that we're gonna be building on top of this roof. And it is gonna be absolutely awesome. It's inspired by a real life build of one of my favorite Favorite buildings in London. For those of you guys who don't know, I live in London, in England, and I've lived here for about 10 years time. And often in my Minecraft world, things get in, uh, things in the real life, things in the real life inspire me in Minecraft. In fact, this bridge over here, uh, is, which is known as the Great Bridge, was inspired by London Bridge many years ago. Um, one of my favorite buildings, or bridges I suppose, in London um, inspired that build. And what we're going to be doing today is inspired by another one of my favorite buildings in London, and that is called the Battersea Power Station. Now, for those of you guys who live in London, I don't know how many of there, there, there are, but for those of you guys who live here, you know what I'm talking about. The Battersea Power Station is a very iconic uh, building, a very iconic London building, um, because it is an old power station that has three very large, very large and very visible smoke towers. And back in the day when it used to run, I think it used to be a coal power station, it had these three huge smoke towers um, that you can see across the London skyline. And that's what I wanna try and work on today. I reckon if we can get three little smoke towers installed on top of this roof, it will go a long, long way to help uh, finalize the build and add a little something on top of this roof, which is otherwise a little bit Land, even though we have some really cool block variation going on in here, it is quite a flat ass roof, as you can see. Uh, but I think it turned out really beautiful, though. Don't you guys? Oh man, I think it looks so freaking cool. What we still need to do, though, is work out the actual uh, curvature of the roof on both this side and the other side. And um, yeah, didn't go too well on this side, if you guys can remember. 
little bit of a block missing over here. So I think I'm gonna go off camera for a second, lay down some foundations and see if I can get this right. And then we'll try and figure out the design for some really cool smoke towers on top of our lumber mill. Despite the fact that this is an absolutely epic view of the lumber mill, I'm sure you guys will agree with the, uh, the awesome cross beams of the roof over there, <laughs> we got a bit of a problem. When I made this little outskirting over here to hide the redstone work, I didn't actually notice that it is not symmetrical. Actually, this little thingy is sort of stuck to the left-hand side of the building and it's not actually in the middle of the building. And that means that while I've been trying to work out the foundations for this bend in the roof, for this curve in the roof, unfortunately, we got a problem, man. It is not 100% symmetrical, which means I'm gonna have to remake this wall um, of the building. Basically, we have to make this wall a little bit fatter on this side of things to get it to align, um, which is mildly annoying. Um, I'm not gonna lie, because we spent quite a lot of time working on that, but, this build is, you know, absolutely massive and also not 100% um, symmetrical. So, you know, we had to expect some um, derpage, some architectural derpage to happen at some point. And it has happened. Um, it doesn't matter though, my friends. We'll be able to solve it. And when I say we, um, I really mean me. <laughs> I will be able to solve it off camera and you guys won't even have to worry about it. Um, yeah, I'll put in the grind, I'll do the fixing and all you guys have to do is watch. Is that a deal? That's a deal to me. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's get cracking on completing this section of the roof. I'm gonna do the onion method, which was the same way that we did it last time where we're just gonna do one layer at a time. Um, and essentially what we're trying to do here is create a roof that not only is curved, but also curves upwards on this very uh, slight gradient, which is actually literally a gradient of one slabbage. Um, if that is a, uni a unit of measurement, I don't know, but it should be. Because um, that's what the gradient of this roof is. 1.0 slabbage. Um, but if we do it like this, one layer at a time, you guys can see that it slowly builds up that, um, that it slowly builds up the gradient of the roof. Um, and it actually turns out quite, quite looking quite nice. And it's quite an easy way to do it. Um, I, I was quite worried about getting this little section done or this little part of the roof done. But actually with this method, it's not too bad. Um, it's probably not the most efficient use of slabbage because every now and then we have to use two slabbages um, or slabbage eye, I suppose, um, to complete it. But I think that it probably looked pretty sweet from the inside also. And all we have to do now is finish it off like that. Um, we're gonna need a little bit of oak wood slabbage for that one. And there we go. That looks pretty damn awesome, doesn't it? Look at that, man. It has got a beautiful gradient to it. And what we could probably do too, I don't know if it's actually gonna be possible or not. I don't, I don't think so. We might be able to do a little something like this, right? So check it out. Uh, this one's not gonna be possible, is it? We could do like a, oh, this could actually work out really nicely. Check it out. We could do one solid block, I suppose. Um, of slabbage that goes all the way down like this and then we'll finish it off with a little touch like that so there we go yeah perfect look at that man a uh, beautiful that is looking absolutely sweet although this middle bit doesn't seem to be 100 percent aligned i think we'll probably have to do another one yep there we go now it's looking beautiful Block variation applied and the roof is looking jazzy, if I do say so myself. Although it does look like I've missed out one block over there. Yeah, there we go. Nice! Oh baby, that's awesome. Now we just got one more side to do of this giant roof. Um, and then this little project's gonna be finished. Actually, there's a little bit more block variation I need to do over here. So let's just get that done just before I forget. There we go, nice. Okay, so now we're gonna have a similar problem, I'm assuming, on this side because it looks like, yeah, the roof is gonna be way bigger than the building downstairs, and we might actually have to build into this road or get rid of this tree. I don't actually know how we're gonna do this, but I'm just gonna get the roof down first and then assess the damage afterwards. Actually, it doesn't look like it's too bad. We might have to take down this, um, this lamppost over here, though, and perhaps move the tree one block in that direction, but we'll deal with all of that road work those road, works, road, road work issues later. Let's work on this roof first. 
damn, that roof is looking freaking awesome. But I think we're going to have a little bit of problem with the Council of Mole City, my friends. As you can see, the roof is building into city limits. It is covering one of the street lamps and building into one of the trees of Mole City. And uh, I know that the environmentalists of Mole City are not going to be happy with that. And we're going to have to try and figure something out. But as far as a roof design goes, I think that that is pretty damn smart. And I'm digging it, man. It, you know what? It looks like a Viking boat upside down, right? That's pretty much what it looks like. And uh, that's, that's fine by me, considering this is actually a Viking structure, uh, a Viking lumber mill. So very, very pleased with how this roof has come out, my friends. Cannot wait to see what you all think about it. I think it looks absolutely sweet and I'm very happy with it. And uh, yeah, the interior is also looking absolutely awesome. I wish that we had enough time today to work on that interior. However, my friends, we need to work on a little something else on top of this roof um, before the end of this episode. Um, and I'm just aware that we are slowly but surely running out of time. I mentioned earlier that what I would like to do is work on some smoke turrets for our lumber mill. And I think that that is gonna be absolutely freaking awesome. Now, I've been thinking that we could do this in, in a number of ways, right? So what I'm thinking is, from a law perspective, inside of this lumber mill, there are giant furnaces that are cooking down wood and, uh, you know, um, steaming planks and, you know, making charcoal and all of that sort of thing and all of the steam and all of the smoke inside of this lumber mill needs to go out somewhere and i want to make some really cool looking smoke turrets for the place now we could do this in a number of ways i was thinking we could have three smoke turrets or four smoke turrets that are um, equally set apart all the way along the top of the roof right so um, for example something like this this isn't a hundred percent accurate but just as an example um, Let's just make four of these little smoke turrets like this, right? So we could have four of them like that, which I think actually now that I look at it, that is pretty damn sweet. Um, okay, yeah, we might have to do it that way. The other way that we could do it, of course, is to cram the turrets into one end of the lumber mill. And as this is the business end of the lumber mill, I was thinking that maybe what we could do is have like a like the four turrets like this right so they could be right on top of each other um, on this side of the lumber mill so let's get another two of these in place like this and then we wouldn't have any on this side because this is like the storage area and i suppose this is the place where we are receiving goods from the uh, old wood grove over there so that could work out quite nicely actually um so we could have our four turrets over here and no turrets over there hmm yeah, that could work out. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to set up just some skeletons of these turrets. And I think I'm going to stick them over here for now. Um, I'm going to just do this, right? Let's just make them a little bit tall. We can actually just make them 100% square. Um, in the next episode, I think we'll work on styling them and making them look absolutely awesome. But if for now, we just do something like that, right? So that's one of the turrets. Um, and we'll just do the same thing for the other four. Then we can go somewhere over there in Mole City and look in this direction and have a look at the skyline. And I'm just, I'm hoping that it will create an interesting skyline for us. Um, and, you know, just, just to break up the monotony of the roof here at the Lumber Mall. So let me get this done and then we will have a look. Ignoring the texture, which is 100% wrong, I think that that looks kind of cool, right? It adds something interesting to the Mole City skyline. And uh, yeah, that could actually work. I think we need to get a better viewpoint though. Let's see if we can find another spot. From up here on the Dogolith, I think that that is actually looking pretty cool. I mean, you can barely see the turrets because they're made out of cobblestone. But if we make them out of clay bricks or something like that, they might actually look pretty darn cool. And that lumber mill is looking amazing from up here, isn't it guys? The color of that roof really sets it out in amongst the other buildings of Mole City. And uh, we can see the railway line coming in from the, from the grove over there, which looks absolutely awesome. And the rest of the Viking district will share a similar color scheme. And that side of Mole City is going to have a really unique look to it, which I think is absolutely 
awesome. Oh man, what an awesome build that has turned out to be. Absolutely loved it. Anyway, my friends, here we are at the Dogolith, and guess what? I know, it's crazy. It's been ages since we've been up here. And actually, the last time that we were up there, up here, we completed this side of the Dogolith, which means we are on the final side of the Dogolith for season number four. Can you freaking believe it? And I have got eight more of you fine cyber dogs out there onto the Dogolith today. And to end today's episode, I want to welcome the following and cyber dogs to the dogolith derp <laughs> let's try that one more time my friends please welcome to the final side of the dogolith for season number four from youtube subscribers drought captain crazy jimmy feng alex hostetta tracy donahay jn chickerol dick holmes and oscar mayan 97 Welcome to the Doglith, my friends. Thank you for being subscribers and for being so freaking awesome. And now from Dogcraft.net, the official CyberDog fan community, we have got Ben Cuxton, Achtan45, Tristan King, Taloncraft, Dumbird, Mushkin, Danny Crazy, and Lily of the World. Welcome, my friends, and thank you for being a part of the Dogcraft.net community. Remember, guys, if you want to stand the chance of being added to the Dogolith, you need to be a subscriber of the Ren Dog channel and leave me a comment somewhere on my videos. I choose you guys randomly from those comments. There is also a thread on Dogcraft.net where you can go and stick your YouTube username and uh, you will have a chance of being added to the Dogolith from that thread also. And remember, guys, Dogcraft.net is the official CyberDog fan community. It's 100% free to join, but you do need to be 13. It is also the home and the access to the official CyberDog Nation fan server, which is server.dogcraft.net. So if you haven't checked all of that jazz out yet, uh, go and check it out. Anyway, my friends, that is it for today's episode. I'm just admiring this lumber mill behind us. Oh man, that's looking awesome. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and smackity smack that like button to show me that you had a good time today. That's it from me. And we will see you guys in the next episode.